guys welcome back bdcqr here and we're back with not a p and q and c and a and t video sorry to disappoint whoever was looking forward to that my partner in crime is studying for exams and it's hard to have a conversation on a p and q and c and a and t video which we usually get by without doing a script because we're actually in conversation so instead i'm going to be going solo and doing a multiplayer video that i've been itching to do for a little while so what we've got here is Red Lantern Hal Jordan, Ares, and Batgirl, and it's in keeping with and in conversation with our recent multiplayer videos where we were trying to highlight Red Lantern Hal Jordan and trying to make him relevant again, and in this case, we are making Ares relevant again, but, I mean, technically, Ares is still pretty good. The difference is he used to be great, and I think this is a team composition that lets him be great again. So, as you saw at the beginning of the video when we quickly rent, went through the gear loadout, Ares has Demon Blade, which is important there because it's the only gear that has crit chance for special 2 and crit, sorry, damage boost for special 2 also. And this gets you as close to 100% on uh, of crit on special 2 as the game will allow when you have maximum aug augmentations on Ares and Demon Blade and the crit chance from the Tantu Totem. Fourth World Godly Mace is there instead of his uh, Ares uh, Bloody Sword because one, the splash damage of 15% can be 100,000, which is significant, makes it worth taking up a slot, but it also boosts special two damage, which his Bloody Sword does not, even though it does more splash damage. And this is important because if we're going to take advantage of Tanty Totem, what it means is you need to prioritize knocking out the opponent in front of you more than increasing the splash damage. So Bloody Sword has 20%. This only has 15% splash damage. This will do more damage than the Bloody Sword when you're doing special twos. And Batgirl has Master's Death Cart, Lexcore Gauntlets, and Necron Scythe, which is how we've been doing it lately. Previous... An alternative loadout could be using League of Assassins Knives instead of Lexor Gauntlets, but I prefer the higher chance of critting on Special 1, knocking someone out, taking advantage of Necron Scythe Revive if you've knocked somebody out, versus the risk of having a non-crit Special 1, even with the extra splash damage, it means that you are potentially dragging out the fight a little bit longer. I mean, it probably matters less because of Master's Death Cart. Because when you come in, you'll have two bars. You'll get two kicks at the can. But, um, you know, again, that's personal preference. The League of Assassin's Knives works also. And if you spent all, my, all that time trying to get a survivor, eh, you take advantage of it. And in this case, too, for Backer, we use Necron Scythe instead of the Cloak because Master's Death Cart ruins the any kind of uh, tag and stun that you get. So that abil ability of the Cloak of Destiny is actually wasted if you use it with Master's Death Cart. And last but not least, we've already demonstrated the beauty of trying to make Red Lantern Hal Jordan relevant again. He has got the Claw of Horus, Astro Harness, and Enchantress Companion Gear. So Enchantress, after doing a special, means that you've got the Flying Skulls, it gives an unblocked special, basically, would whoever's tagging in in this team, it's Ares. Astro Harness means that he doesn't lose health while doing a couple special ones, or even one special two if you don't care about knocking out gear. But the Claw of Horus is important because he has a decent chance, even if it's only 75% on each uh, special, he has a decent chance to do a couple special ones of knocking, knocking out at least one and sometimes two gears. And if you're desperate, you can try to get three. Why that matters is that the revive that you get, that the opponent gets from having uh, a couple of pieces of the fourth world gear set is that it requires two pieces of gear. If you can knock the opponent down to only one piece of the fourth world gear set, you will get, um, you will knock, cost them the revive. And when you tag in Ares, you're going to be doing a, a knockout and getting your power back with Tantu Totem. The other thing is that the, the Claw of Horus is also a potential counter to Astro Harness. Most time won't matter because once the first invulnerability is gone, your 
doing more than enough damage with Ares to knock them out past every other invulnerability. So we've done two variations on this team with Batgirl and Ares. The most recent one is Hawkgirl, so that we could tag them in and out really fast. And Red Lantern Hal Jordan makes up for losing Hawkgirl because you are much less likely to whiff on your tag in um, with your special specialist if two gears are broken or they're taking damage over time. The previous and the original iteration of this team was Killer Frost. And she used to be really important because while you were building or while you're using your power to knock them out, and this was pre Tantu Totem, you would dampen their power gen. And it would mean it would leave you less vulnerable to the other team building up power in case you had any kinds of fight that lasted too long. Killer Frost isn't nearly as important now because Tantu Totem means that it doesn't actually take time for them to build up power. You've got people tagging in, already have a special. And hopefully this team is fast enough that it doesn't even matter um, if they're making or they're generating less power because they wouldn't have been able to hurt you with a special anyways. I guess the, the biggest risk of this team is, or any team with Tantu Totem, is that the, the character, your special specialist that's holding on to Tantu Totem doesn't knock out the opponent. What used to make this so good was that Ares um, passive, if they didn't knock out the opponent, it would mean that they couldn't block anymore. Um, I guess that's sort of thinking about it backwards because originally when he was first came out, even if they blocked, Special 2 would remove it and he would do a huge amount of damage. So the problem now is that in this current meta that's not so obvious, that when the opponent blocks Ares Special 2, it will not do crit damage. It will do uh, a reduced amount of damage that's low enough that most of the time they will not get knocked out. So why this loadout and team composition works so well is because the Suicide Squad Enchantress uh, companion gear on Red Lantern, Red Lantern Hell Jordan lets you come in. You just saw here Ares got his special two in unblocked. He does enough damage so that the fourth world mace is worth using up a slot for even though he does less splash damage than blade of the war god and that's really it it may not be as fast as the flashpoint team but i think where you make up for it is being engaged in the fight where you actually have to think through a little bit what you're going to do take a look at the first opponent, see what their gear loadout is, and then decide what you're going to do. All right, so this is perfect. So Arkham Knight Batman's got Astro Harness and the Mother Box. If we knock out enough pieces of Batman's gears, then the Mother Box won't matter when we come in with Ares to do a special two. And I guess even if it does, we can always do it again because we've got Tantu Totem. So let's get rid of some of his gears. There's one. So you can see the animation. He's got. We've gotten rid of one piece of gear. Nothing there. I mean, we could always do another one. Oh, she's blocking. That's unfortunate. What we probably should have done was wait and see. So this is where you see the problem of not um, knocking them out. And we lose Hawkgirl's quick tag and tag out. But Batgirl is going to be able to get the unblock. That's where you see the little red animation around Jessica Cruz. So even if she wasn't stunned, she wouldn't be able to block anyways. And let's soften him up. One gear gone. Two gears gone. Biggest problem, I think, with this team potentially is any team that relies on a special two as your main source of damage, if you whiff, if you don't knock them out, then you're going to be struggling a little bit and wait either um, waiting until they generate enough power on the bench or if you're willing to risk it when they've got low health because, you know, they're going to have taken some damage for you not to have finished so quickly, then you're going to end up maybe not having your main guy. And now he's back. Oh, and we didn't even need him. And there you go.
Big thank you to our patrons on Patreon, specifically Consul Peasant, who was supporting us at the highest tier last word, Sean Farrell, Daniel Simonson, Aaron Mall, and Michael DeVries, supporting us on the credited level, and Eddie G and Chris Wolf at the gratitude level. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you next time. Komoda.